work for you or work for your boss or work for whatever, whatever you're trying to use it. Um, this is a free rig and it's a Mixamo rig, so I'll just ahead of time say that nothing about this talk is going to be specific to a single rig or a single workflow. And that's both the problem and the cool thing about the NLA. And I will get to the slide. So who am I and why are you listening to me? Um, this is me, also me. Uh, these are the blender things I was involved with here since whenever. Um, and with all the other animation people, so this is not just me doing this. And uh, I've been in the industry 25 years, and I started learning 3D animation when I was 19. And uh, before that, I was like, I'm going to be an animator. And then as soon as you are wanting to animate, you have to rig. And then as soon as people find out you rig, then you never animate again. <laughs> That's the cycle. And then you learn to rig yourself. And you're like, OK, this time. And then you're never happy with your rig. And, then just, and now you're here 25 years later. And you're like, I'm going to animate one day. Uh, I took a brief uh, trip to the Philippines to train a bunch of 2D animators, which was a cool thing. And I ended up in game development and motion capture editing. And then that led to Weta on Lord of the Rings, where I met a lot of awesome people. And also realized that everyone has the same problem, no matter how big you are or where you are. Uh, because I shouldn't have the answer for something that big, but I did, and that's how I got there. And I came back and continued to work with uh, a lot of software companies. And then a few years ago, I started looking at Blender and stumbled around and <laughs> I went, ooh, the NLA is cool. This is all the stuff I know from Motion Builder and from all these like cool tools. I'm editing stuff and you know making all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, I know what this is. And I tried to use it. And I was like, I don't understand a thing. <laughs> so I will continue on about Blender. I asked on Twitter a little while ago, like, who uses the NLA? And there was probably half. They're like, what is that? I don't know. So if you know it and use it, raise your hand. More than the Twitter response, so that's good. Uh, OK. <laughs> I took away from this that education was a big issue with the NLA, because I've used nonlinear animation tools for, for a long, long time in a lot of different applications and helped design these tools. And the Blender NLA tools were very hard to learn. Um, and then when you show people the NLA tools, they're like, yeah, I use them. And then what, how do you use them? So if you use them as an animation layer tool, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. OK. Yeah, there you go. So as an animation layer tool, uh, a la, not a na la, <laughs> uh, it's not very many. So who uses it for just exporting animations for games? Mm, one, yeah, OK. So you slightly outnumber the uh, animation layer crew, what do the rest of you use it for? <laughs> uh, I have seen some really interesting use cases for basically like working around action constraints and working around um, some rigging problems. And then a bunch of other people just were doing really cool stuff with it that I was surprised by. And every time we break a feature, they let me know that they were doing something weird with it. Um, so animation tool or export tool. This is the issue around this functionality is that like at one, one point, it's a clip system. You can stick clips together and play them back and do cool stuff with them and trigger them and do all kinds of things. And if you're an animator, you're like, great. I just want an animation layer. And you go in and you're like, OK. I don't understand why everything has to be a clip and how to edit things. And then the flip side is if you're a game animator and you don't care about layers, but you have to export to FBX, this is also the best way to control it. And so you're in there setting up all this stuff, and then you don't want to mess with all that because you just set it up for export. So now you're afraid to go in and use it as a layer editing tool. And the UI makes this really not friendly. Um, the speed bumps that I hit initially as an animator were, where are my animations? So you, know, you start to figure out like an object has object keys on an armature is like a root motion in some games and it's you know it's moving around so you have this layer that lives on the object and you see the keys 
and then you enter pose mode and now the keys shift and are in a, a new place and the action kind of has both of them if you let it. And so now you're in two modes trying to edit something that's stuck in a clip and now it's really hard to understand. Um, the new Blender users, I found this hard to understand for a while. If you've used Blender for a while, you're like, of course that's where, you know, it's two separate things. Um, the actions hidden away in the UI also makes this problematic. Um, just this, you know, two days ago, I was talking to someone and they're like, oh yeah, you have to go to the action editor and create an, you know, it was just this like 10 step process. I'm like, no you don't. <laughs> so hopefully I'll, I'll simplify some things that came up this week. And the, the naming of things, even for us working on it, a clip, a strip, or whatever, it's hard. So there's, there's multiple issues with the animation system as it is, but it's still highly usable. And so I hope that coming away from this class interactive talk slash Q&A session, that if you use it for export only, you'll understand how to use it for animation layers and explore flexibility of that. If you use it for animation layers and you don't ever export to games, great, but you can start to understand a new way to kind of manage and store these actions. Um, and yeah, if you're hanging out by the door and want to find a seat, there might be one or two, so just come on in. Um, and then there's also some quirks about the FBX and G GLTF export stuff and that interfaces differently. And so we have lots of parts of Blender that are all looking at this little edit system and using it in different ways. And in other tools or even paid add-ons that have cleaned this up, it, it makes it more user friendly. So using NLA for just LA or LA, linear animation, and animation export are two different things. So we'll look at export first, and then we'll get to the better stuff. Because, um, and I will tell you right now that I just finished sitting in on a talk from the Nora animation team. Yeah, yeah, but as he was q and a he's like, oh, you know, the bottom action is the default action in the export. And I was like, taking a note. <laughs> <laughs> but, this will be a little recap if you just came from that awesome talk. So, if you're using it to export stuff to a game or to send it to FBX to do something with in somewhere else, um, you one have to understand that the export settings, when you get here, it's basically usually by default all actions. And then you see this like NLA strips and you're like, I want everything everywhere. And then you're like, okay, well, but when it exports all that, how do I control the name? And if you forgot and muted something over here, right, these little check boxes that are clearly mute or don't show or, you know, again, the UI has some issues, but we can improve that. When that's off, you see no animation. Um, so those need to be on and you ha have to have that checked. And then you need to understand that the, um, the name of this thing here, the strip, and we will continue to work on vocabulary as much as I don't want to. These little things that are in here as strips, those names are what go to the exporter. So if you see I've checked this box, I have these three tracks selected to say these animations are live and then I've named these. And when I open the FBX that I've exported here, and again we see this because it's a nice note to myself, this, this bottom uh, stand idle animation, they're just standing around, is the first take in the stack. So I have one FBX file now that has three animations in it and they're in order. And then uh, I have from bottom to top, comes out top to bottom, and the name is from that strip. You can have the action that is attached to the object named whatever you want, which is a cool workflow. He, he was updating the action and renaming it, whatever. And when you update it, you can just tell the strip, hey, look to the new action, export, and you're not having to constantly rename things, right? You can set this up once and you can continue to push the actions behind the scenes and you have a consistent export. But just explaining this and making this slide, I tried over and over again to make it clear and I'm still not happy with what this is and, um, then you look at GLTF and it has its own 
quirks. So I'm not a GLTF user, but there is someone who's got some code in the audience that we will try to get into both exporters that instead of having to manage all of this only from the NLA, when you go to export this stuff, you'll be able to just simply select, these are the actions I want at the time of export and say, go. I don't need to pre-arrange all this stuff. So if we can get those into Core Blender, awesome. That's my plan. Animation layers now is another flip of the mind. You go, okay, well now I was using all this for export, but now I want to use animation layers. I want to change things. I want to stack stuff and do stuff. But if you've got the whole system set up for export, now you're just continuing to add to the chaos and that's no fun. So <laughs> this is where everyone else just gets uh, steps on a Lego brick. They go, okay, I'm gonna use the layers. I'm gonna get in there. And they open the NLA up. And until we fix this, you still won't see any of this stuff. And I'll show you in a second, but I want, I want, a, I want a preview kind of what it should look like and then we'll go through it together. So creating a layer is really creating a new action every time. So if in your head you say, I say animation layer, you say action, animation layer, Action. Animation layer. Action. All right. So it's just another action. And the action is going to be created in the NLA or as soon as you set a keyframe. Because if I don't have any keys on an object like this cup, when I, ke when I keyframe it, it goes, oh, I need an action to store it in. And so it creates it. And there is a setting here where I have it set to selected, and you know, the mouse is moving around here. So I usually leave it on selected so that I don't see all this stuff show up for the whole scene. And this other little checkbox, which um, is basically like show the invisible hidden action, which is why number one is there's the armature, and then two is no action action. <laughs> and it's basically showing you, hey, you don't have an action yet, why do you want that? Anyone want to take a guess? Anybody? Because you want to work in layered fashion and if you don't have that shown, you don't get to control how the blending starts when you key. Who cares? Well, you care because if you're thinking, I'm gonna offset something and you accidentally scale key, uh, key, key scale, and now you go to scrub and suddenly your character's ballooning and jump, you know, you're like, I've destroyed this thing, nothing works right, it's freaking out. So you delete it and you leave the layers and you go back to just deleting keyframes and manually working and it's no fun. So this is the part of layered animation workflow you need to understand. By turning that little checkbox on that looks like you know, a diamond wearing a hat, <laughs> you get this diamond wearing a hat that says no action and then when you hit the um, end panel, you get to see that there is this setting over here to both create a new action if you were gonna do so. And then there's also these two things here that is what really you need to understand for animation layering. Extrapolation and blending. Extrapolation, I'll explain more in detail, but for the most part it has a default mode. I set it to nothing because I'll show you why. But the blending mode, combine and additive, this is where you change what the layer is gonna do. And if you change your mind later, you can't because it will not recalculate. If I have my character's control here in space, uh, yeah, my control's here in space, I grab it and I'm gonna do an additive animation offset. Well, it's gonna be a, an offset from this location, right? It's just, it's always going to be where am I and then plus or minus, or you could do subtract. Combine does like both, it says, hey, I'm gonna help you. I'm not gonna just be additive, which is like an old mode. I'm gonna, if you're offsetting something that's animated, I'm additive. But I'm gonna set all the keys like I'm a replacement. I'm overriding everything. And it's a, it, I still don't like it because it's not clear to me what I'm doing, but it's, it's a cool feature. Again, this all needs to be set up ahead of time because you know this is what is going to get, this is going to be the way when I set a key that it gets created. I'm gonna work on additive animation. Great, leave it, combine, or add. Masking, which is a little more conceptually easy to understand, uh, is replace. 
So the blending mode has combine and replace for the most part. And if I have animation that I've worked really hard on, and the bot, I'm like, this is, I've spent two weeks in the graph editor, and all the tangents are really beautiful, and the boss comes by and goes, why is he putting, why is he ending in that pose? That pose was not what we approved, and you're like, hmm, but I polished it already, and now it's a nightmare to change. Replace lets you just mask off that pose and start rebuilding without deleting keys and worrying about all the stuff that got you to that final pose. And you can go back and forth and test. So we'll, we'll show that to you. But if you think replace, think mask. It's masking out the stack. And then we'll, we'll talk about some NLA tricks. And then I'm going to finish on vocab so that while we start to do some live demos and I try not to fail in front of you, which will happen, uh, I won't just sound like I'm speaking American English to you know, the rest of the world, which I unfortunately will. But these words are also just as confusing as my own languages to me. Um, so as long as you think, again, the layer is an action. And we're basically just looking at actions and containers. That's where you start. When I create a strip, which is this little thing out here, the strip just says, I'm holding the space, right? The strip is holding the door open. It's just, it's like I'm saving seats for my friends. And you can name it what you want to get exported. And the, the, the stuff over on the side, the naming kind of doesn't matter. And I'll show you in a minute. We can rename it to make animation layer editing better. But so we have tracks on the side. These are the, the, the stack of things, tracks. You create a placeholder, like a little space holder, save my seat. And then inside that strip um, is a action clip. And the action clip shows up under active strip because you want two things that look almost identical right on top of each other, <laughs> right? As you're more and more tired, you're like, yeah, A, S, A, C, nope. Wrong. So the active strip is, again, it's saving seats. So if you move a seat over, you still want to save your seats along the timeline. Hey, nope, nope, this is my space, stay back. And then wherever they sit, when, you're, when, the, when the animated friends come in, the action comes in and sits next to you, they're going to stay within your row you saved. And then you, so you lose a friend because they got tired of this talk and left. And now you have a space because you trimmed the end of it. You, you, you didn't delete the chair, you just are missing the end of the animation. So the global timeline, this, the, the main timeline shows up as where is the strip here. Then you can see that extrapolation is here, but remember, if you change it later, it's like changing rotation order. You're just gonna destroy things for the most part. So just be aware, it'd be great if an add-on or Core Blender could say, oh, you know what, you made a mistake and started keying into additive that you want to replace or vice versa. Like, it's real easy to recalculate that with math. Not my math, but with real math. <laughs> and it's a solvable problem with, you know, I'm sure geometry nodes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure that's the answer. Uh, you know, or, or shaders from uh, Goo Blender, which is, I'm now jealous I don't have a better, like, character up here. Uh, but that's, this is like, a bigger, higher level control. And then there's a bunch of stuff under here that I've got endless videos that break all this down. But I just want you to understand the areas we're looking at. Then, then below it is your active friends that have had too much coffee and they're jumping around and they just came from you know, the cool animation talk and, and they all have their own start and end, right? The one's asleep, one's active, whatever. Whatever friend is in that space and laying across the row because <laughs> they're tired and animated with too much coffee. Now you have this little local thing inside there. So when you actually want to know, hey, who are you holding seats for? Well, it's in the action clip. It's holding seats for source stand, or stand idle, you know, whatever I've named the action. Because I want it to export a stand idle, I can name this like standing around looking awesome, or standing around looking sad, doesn't matter. That's his idle, it'll always go out. Then there's a bunch of other settings that are kind of local to the action. 
And then there's a new thing that many people don't know about at the very, very bottom, and that's outside of the NLA, actions can now contain their own start and end frame. Great. Why do you care about that? Well, if you have a 400 frame motion capture run and you want 12 of those frames, you don't want to always load that entire action into the NLA if you're just trying to check the animation. So, or if you're just exporting all actions, you don't want to have to pre-trim all that. So this setting shows up in the NLA because it's, it's an owner of the action. And what's nice is you can actually see when it's on or off so that when you load it and your clip of 400 frames comes in as 12, you're like, oh, oh yeah, because I set that somewhere or someone did. So this is, again, more control, but no more clarity over really what's going on. When you load that in, this little sync link turns off. And again, the, the next thing that's going to mess everybody up is this button. And whether it's on or off. Because when I show you, when we jump in to edit your keyframes, th this thing will either make you really happy or it will throw a pile of Legos and make you walk across them again because you've now got your 12 frames and if it's on and you jump in and out, it's like, oh, you want me to save the whole row again. All right, out of my way and just knocks everybody over. And so now it's back to 400 frames and you're like, no, I lost the thing. So just be aware. These are the areas you need to understand. Action tracks. You add strips to the track and the strip holds the clip. Track, strip, clip, <laughs> Sam I am, green eggs and ham. I'm going to show you, you can probably just go get these add-ons and leave now and you'd be fine. <laughs> NLA tools. So I found these recently. They're, this is a small little, like, small $5 add-on. They basically, I posted a video about the NLA like three years ago and I was like, I don't know what's going on, help me. And I found this little set of tools and it's like, hey, I watched this video from this guy at Rigging Dojo, that's me, Brad, uh, complaining about how custom properties don't bake with actions. So I fixed that and I added some cool stuff like extract bones and do stuff. And it was super cheap and I was like, yes, I will take that. And he has a free thing that if you're just using Rigify or you just want custom properties to bake when you collapse layers or actions, then you can go add the free part and just get that functionality until the NLA update team, the, the masters of time, <laughs> get the patches pushed to master. Next, and I won't name names, but the person who made this is in here. If you can figure out who he is by this uh, handsome picture down here, or this fuzzy guy, he's in disguise. This animation layer add-on started very small and I kind of went, yeah, yeah, I want to learn the NLA. And then I went back before getting ready for this talk and looked at all the new stuff that got in there, and I was like, whoa, there's really some cool stuff, including ideas that I've done in other software, but like one-upped in really nice ways. So it's not a, it's paid, but I'm going to work with them to get the tool he built making it better, and then if he's got some workaround for something that's broken, we want to fix it. Learning more. There's a bunch of stuff. Um, again, I've gone over a lot of this stuff in super detail. Rigging Dojo's site has like millions of hours of free learning around Blender and mostly the NLA. Editing motion capture, editing rung cycles, madness that I've stumbled upon, all kinds of stuff. You can hack it with constraints or, you know, when, I, when someone sends me something broken, I try to put it there. There's a ton of stuff. I'm going to share this on my website, so don't, run, don't worry about it. But um, the editing motions, this is like all, all free stuff. And then the Frame Ranger add-on is the other one I'm going to mention just real quick. It's been updated, and it, it's a full management system for actions, including like managing what's visible to an object. So you can basically say, I'm going to load all the cell phone actions onto here, and when you pick it, you only see those, and you can kind of manage and do some really cool stuff. Plus, batch import hundreds of FBXs, and just, it's really cool. It's like, you know, Motion Builder Lite is really what, frame, you know, Frame Ranger, you're like, I don't know what that is, but really, it's a full 
action management system and it's really awesome like including like when you pick an action it changes the frame range of your timeline instead of you guessing like oh well, how many frames is this <laughs> yeah so all that said uh, QA time but live demo time so we'll jump over to actual blender and um, I'm starting with this rig one it was free someone shared it it's the neon rig and um, I will again when I post this stuff I will credit and link everybody, but Mixamo gets used a lot, especially if you're in a hurry or someone's just, you know, trying to make stuff. Mixamo at released a Blender add-on that rigs things, and it's compatible with um, Mixamo skeleton animation. So you can retarget without having to do a bunch of hacks, right? So if you're just trying to previs something and you're already in Mixamo or you've got a bunch of stuff, the Mixamo character rig will basically um, rig an existing Mixamo armature, and then you can load data in, and that's documented on their site. Um, so what I, you know, I loaded in like a bunch of stuff, and now I have these actions. And the first demo of this, I'm just going to kind of go through. So there's the stand idle at the bottom, and then I decided, you know what, she's just standing around too long, and so now she squats down into the stand to crouch, and then pops back up because maybe someone threw something at her. She's telling people about the NLA, and she, you know they didn't want to hear it. And then she looks left, and it almost it's less of a look left than like, oh no, I ducked and dropped my gum. I'm not sure what, I'm not sure what that action is, but um, this is just a simple. Oh yeah, that's a. Yeah, it helps if I don't deselect things. Uh, so I'm going to turn this little button off again, real quick, just to show you. So right now, this is all the actions I see. If I turn this select off, there aren't anything else in the scene, so I don't have any more actions. But I also don't have um, like a visible control of what's new and, and coming in. And while I can still kind of get to stuff on the end panel um, and hit new, it's just, it, this makes sense to me to keep on because now I can kind of, when I go keyframe something, uh, I can do some cool stuff, right? I, can, I know where I'm visibly adding it. And in this case, the extrapolation has nothing hold or hold forward. These words don't mean anything really to you, uh, and sometimes they don't mean anything to me. But for the most part, if I have a hold, it says both directions. When you set a key for the selected object, you, you, it basically just forever in both directions, just like setting a key in time. And so I'll show you that real quick. So I have blending mode on replace, which is what? Who remembers what? Masking, Masking yes. Very good, it's COVID friendly. Uh, it's masking off the animation. And when I um, select all the things and I hit a keyframe, I added 814 keyframes for location rotation. A new action has appeared. Look at that, right there. A new action called armature action. It's a useless name, but it doesn't matter because this track can be renamed as dumb. It's a dumb action because right now, it basically just masks off all my animation. It's gone. Sad. <laughs> I don't know if this will work, but I'm going to try. Because I created uh, yeah. So you have this influence. <laughs> no, I just haven't unselected. So this influence now, I can play back my loop, and I can kind of basically just dull my motion down. And if I, um, here, I'll, I'll graph that there. So now I can say, you know what, I like that first pose and I like all this stuff, but she, you know, she's crazy looking with all this like leaning to the side and spitting her gum out and ducking. So I just wanted to like tone that down. So now she looks more reasonable to be like closer in frame or if your camera's close to her or whatever. And once I'm done with like setting like, oh yeah, this one offset or new pose is kind of just calming her down. Awesome. Mocap is too, you know, maybe someone was just caffeinated and running around. So this is really fast way to basically just instantly interactively choose how much action is coming from this clip. I said I created one key, I told it to hold and mask everything and now I can basically just adjust this. Now this is animatable but not right here because this is still kind of just controlling the creation and this is the next place where everyone steps on Legos or gets hit in the face with a pie or whatever you want to, whatever your favorite cartoon, you know, birds spinning around your head. The action editor, who uses the action editor? 
Oh, there's like a few. Who knows how to find it quickly? Oh, that's a trick question. You can jump to dope sheet and then drop down or like make a script and use Brave Rabbit Shell for like, you know, hope that you remember to jump to dope sheet and then you actually wanted the action editor. I don't really, I, you know, I'm sure there's better ways, but I'm just gonna say, why do we care about the action editor? Because there's this, there's this button that's completely obvious and it says push down or stash. And one sounds like it's hiding from the police and the other is like push down what? Where and why? And, and so you roll over it in the action editor. Let's jump over there and see how intuitive this is. We dope sheet, dope sheet, action editor, and it looks like nothing's changed. And if you blink, you didn't know it changed, except for there's this little box here that doesn't update the width and some shields to you know, arrest it and delete stuff. <laughs> And then there's this giant push down button. You want to push this thing down. Where the hell did it go? The what? I don't know what that is, the NLA. I'm not in LA. I'm in Amsterdam. Where did it go? Oh my god, this thing. Oh. Well, huh. It, NLA track. What's the, I don't know what just happened. It's gone. It's there, but I don't know why. So let's undo and see. Oh, undo works good. So my dumb track is going to uh, disappear in a second, but I'm going to push this down and notice two things. The dumb track is now NLA track, which is really helpful because that's, you know, it was dumb, so dumb that it was like, I don't remember what I was doing. It's gone. It creates a new track when you push it down. But because I'm doing it in the NLA with this little obvious button, <laughs> this thing, right, this, this uh, non-FIFID compliant um, <laughs> push down action pushes down to the top of the NLA track, track as a new strip. Does it? It creates a track. And it adds a strip. Hold on. Hmm. Let's see. I'm going to add an action strip. Am I? Or add a track. I added a track, and I'm going to call this smart. Did I spell it right? That would be good. Now it's smart. It's spelled. So we're going from dumb to smart. So now I'm going to push it down. Huh. Now, if there's an existing track, the strip gets created in it, and it's smart. It says, hey, this is, it went where I wanted it. So the initial name doesn't really matter, even though it tells you to name it. I have yet to find a reason why. But if you have an existing track there, then it goes where you tell it, like a computer does. Go there, it does it, does exactly what you tell it. So now I have this little, this little blip, and now I'm going to try to show you the difference between hold nothing and hold forward. A few versions ago, this was impossible to understand because the display said, I always look the same, no matter what I do. So right now, <laughs> If I set this to nothing, you saw her update, maybe. If I go back to hold, she jumps down a little bit. If I go to nothing, she stops. If I scrub all the way over here, boop. So I hit that one spot. So right now it's saying, do nothing except for exactly what this clip is doing. And so I'm going to move the end of this out. And now, it's going to still do nothing once you're off the clip, but it's just like, hey, I'm, I'm now just holding this table. I'm not going to care about the whole row. The, you know, and if something happens, it's not going to just like knock them off the end and shoot them out the window. I want you to know something else, and this is, <laughs> this is still, this should be fixed for animation layer stuff. Um, the influence value that we had, I liked the toned down motion. Now when you push this, <laughs> when you push it to a track, whether it creates it itself or you add it, there's now a little line here. And guess what? <laughs> Where would you find what that is? The animated influence, you say? Yes, that's correct. Where is that? Action clip. All right. We've had... Someone who already uses it, a breakthrough, he knows how to still use it. 
So <laughs> down here on the smart track, notice that the the clip name is now this. Uh, oh, oh, the track name goes to the strip. So again, from the action editor, you don't really see it. It goes away, and you're like, "What did I name it? That was dumb." Yeah, it was. That's what I named it. It's on the smart track. Now this doesn't matter. I can call it smart something. I'll leave it smart. The clip is dumb, and now there's this new little checkbox over there, animated influence. Why is that there? It's because we started with the influence value. So we toned it down, and when we pushed it, it's like, oh yeah, I should keep that value. And it sets a keyframe for it, and it sets it at the value. So now I've started to layer some adjustments to just this like stand to crunch now, right? Like maybe I didn't want to like tone down the whole thing, but just this action. Or I decide, you know what? The stand to look left was really the problem, so I'm going to scoot this down. So this was fine, and then um, I'm going to un turn this off for a second and notice that it kind of has a square bracket around it. So now I've got stand to left. This was just the one that was like really bugging me. So I'm going to turn this back on, and now she just tosses her head. So that's better. I'm happy with that. And you know, now I can be careful with it and kind of you know, extend it a little bit. Um, but if I really decide I just want it to go back to the whole thing, I can set it back to hold. Or I can say hold forward. Because the animation up to this point is fine. But for my fix forward and anything else I add to it, I want it to just keep going. So you have the choice to say affect everything or just stay, keep to yourself. It's masking. It's keeping to itself. It's, it's a 2222 culturally aware <laughs> strip with an animated value. And if you don't want to animate this, you don't have to keep it animated. You can you know, unanimate it, or you can uncheck it. And just, again, you can still compare. So this isn't geometry nodes by any stretch of the imagination. But it starts to give you the ability to quickly test ideas and get feedback and show directors and show animation or show yourself when you come back from lunch. You're like, I don't know if I like all these changes. Did I actually go backward? Which I would like to admit that that never happens. I've never worked on something really, really hard to find that in the end it was worse. <laughs> yes, way too often. Don't do it, but you can't help it. You're an artist, animator, or tech artist, so you know the modelers, that's just their jam. But <laughs> our stuff looks amazing all the time until you hit spline or you come back and look at it and go, who did this? <laughs> so we have these controls. And I'm going to stop looking at this here in a second, but I just want you to understand a couple things. If you don't do anything else with the NLA, this should give you a hint at how to start testing your ideas faster and iterate on things without destroying all your work. Now, what if I don't like that pose anymore? Where are my keyframes? Because, you know, I see a key down here, but it's probably not anything but the animated strip time, right? It's probably just like hanging out. And if I was to go to the graph editor, which I'm not going to do out of principle, uh, it's, it can, you know, it's just one key. But what about the whole rest of the animation? What if I grab this, uh, I want to see the stand idle. What? Mine? What? Uh, you sound like birds. Tab? Tab. 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 Yes. Excellent. What is that? What happened? Yeah, so this white on green text is super readable. <laughs> Beautiful. It turns green. And now what do I do? Well, I see all the keys selected. And I can jump over now to the graph editor. And, you know, I have keys. And you know what? I don't care about this because I know how to use animation layers. <laughs> the people that spent all week tweaking their graph handles and tangents and weights are scared to death because that is a nightmare scenario. But really, if you zoom in, this is just the end of all your tweaks. Like, you know, maybe one or two frames in there that are interpolated, but you spent all this time making this mess because the splines were doing the job of undoing all your work you had carefully crafted. So 
tab to find this, and I don't want to look at it anymore, but that's what you do, and it turns bright green, and it says, like, hey, now it's editable. But what happened to the edits? <coughs> huh. I want to see the changes on the base layer based on what's going on above it. Who knows the answer? Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. But I'm going to try to let someone else answer because I almost guarantee you won't have the answer. I'm not going to bet money because he knew it, but that's a, that's a trick question. So action editor, but the action editor won't show me what stand crouch looks like when I change stand idle. Mm, thank you for playing. Try again. I hit tab and go back. Under the super intuitive edit menu, at the top, full stack, boom. Now I'm editing the keys on the base layer, the stand idle, but I'm seeing it in relation to what's happening above the stack, all of my edits. So now if I go to the graph editor and I do something crazy like be destructive or just move stuff, you know, I will eventually see the changes. And, oh. <laughs> Thanks, Undo. We won't do that again. But the full stack gives you information about the whole thing. So that's cool. And it's not default. So when you hit tab, you have to know it's there. I'm going to tab back out of that because that was scary and a close call. But I just, again, this is. We have a 28-page document full of NLA improvements, and this morning I made 12 more additions to my note on my phone about what we could make better and improve. And again, it still is usable as is, unless we break it, which that also never happens. So this Start Tweaking's full stack was an awesome addition that the animation module helped bring into fruition. and. There are another thi a few things like, I'm going to take credit for this because this is my first commit to actually building Blender, testing something, and submitting a patch and getting committed. <laughs> you can bake action from the NLA again. I don't know what version this disappeared, but I don't know if it was ever there, but I know that I could find it and bake action from the NLA, and then one day it was gone. And I had to go hunt around for it. And I was like, no, 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 it should be in there. So you can now bake action again from the NLA, both selecting it from the menu or searching for it, which is super exciting. All of this is, is a read the manual. But um, the thing I will want to point out is um, if you're happy with this whole edit and you don't have object and pose keys because you're not doing root animation, you open it and you set the frame range to something intelligent and um, you, you bake it. And if you have root motion, and I will again not admit how long this took me to see and figure out because I watched a lot of videos, uh, you can shift select object and bake both the object and the pose keys at the same time. And if you have the add-on that bakes properties, when you have Rigify FK IK switches, all that stuff will also bake. So you don't lose those switches. Um, and so I'm going to not overwrite a current action. I'm going to hit OK. <laughs> and I think I still had everything selected. We will see what happens. Uh, baking still is working a work in progress. <laughs> I, I said intelligent frame range, but I really should have just done like 12 frames. <laughs> So while that's working, when it bakes, and I also picked objects, so, you know. <laughs> I, I will say I don't open this very often anymore because I used a cool little add-on called Brave Rabbit Shelf. And I shoved some code in there that basically just sets up my baking. And so I have a bake object pose selected. I have a bake all, and I have a bunch of code that's just shoved in the side. And then I added it to a quick menu. And right now it's not there because I shut off a lot of add-ons just because I wanted to be able to read the shelf. But uh, Brave Rabbit tools, um, 
you can find some really cool stuff. And again, I'll link all that stuff from the Rigging Dojo blog. But uh, Brave Rabbit has been running around the Blender conference and uh, has produced some really cool driver tools and really cool stuff. But the shelf is, it's great. You want code to run, you shove it there, and you just add it to the shelf, and there's no add-on. So I have cleaned up my baking process quite a bit. Or you use a paid add-on like animation layers or NLA tools, and they've got some really cool stuff to help with baking. So I've baked this to the, the, the action, and now the entire edit is in this thing, and there's some feet slip, and you know there's some stuff to clean up, but um, I can turn these off and just make sure that everything worked correctly. And so now this edit's kind of done, and we do want to be able to clean this up a little more, but you know, now you're back to a base action, and you can just go here and start deleting things, you know, like animators do, and select stuff, and, and do, do, do your destructive editing, and, and do your stuff. Um, or you can come in here and start layering again. And now I'm actually going to turn off uh, selection, just because I don't want to lose. But if I have selection off, there's all this stuff. Oh, that's what's happening. Sorry. There's a bug fix for this, but uh, that's why. Leave selection on, but this has been fixed, by the way. Thank you. I don't know who did the patch, but it was, it was like this week. Um, in my version of Blender, if I click and drag in the like, side area here, the armature gets deselected, and so you lose your selection. So just be aware. That's what happens and why I just went like, ah, why did that go? I, I am in LTS just for the added danger. All right, so the, the, why I'm pointing this out is, and then, you know, I'll, I'm going to take a break. You guys can stretch and ask questions for a second. Um, when we go back to bake, I've baked it once, and you know what? I, I don't want to just keep generating action over action over action, and, you know, I'm sure most of you know this, but if I turn on overwrite current action, and I set this much tinier now, we'll do, like, whatever, and I'm only going to bake pose. So I can bake it and just overwrite a section of it. So I'm just basically pushing back to the current live destructive action because I don't want to just generate 400 copies and it's no good. Um, so setting overwrite current action with one live and then you can you know, basically just ignore this stuff um, is really handy. Or you decide like none of it's good and you just come in here and delete it but also notice that the strip uh, influence was still there, so let me undo that real quick. I'm going to put that back to one and push it down. Okay, so that's the full animation, and I don't like it. And so I come back to dumb, and I go, you know what? I'd, this was a bad choice, and I delete you. And now I can go back to my menu without leaving the NLA, because I put it there, bake action. And I can overwrite. Ah, oh, I set it to 250 again. This is why I scripted this, because I... I <laughs> When you go to bake action, it always resets the end frame. So immediately, that was the first thing I did was I wanted to grab the frame range that, like for selected uh, strip vocabulary. I c if I have a strip selected, it will only bake that and you know some other stuff. But that actually went pretty fast because I only baked pose. And so now I just decided like, ah, that edit was bad, and I've deleted it and gone back to you know make a new action. So this is one way to start working with it as a clip layering tool to create something. There are, of course, ways, if you have really nice animation like on Nora, where everything is just animated to sync up, you can just stack the clips and play them back. But there isn't a good way to offset root motion without kind of hacking the object or putting it in the rig. So I prefer to kind of layer it this way as, a, as an exploration tool to kind of create a new mix of motion than trying to stack uh, strips in a row. But there are patches in the works to allow this to like transform the strip so you can align things and you know have them align in space and link together instead of jumping back. So that's, again, those are fixes that are coming or you have existing patches hidden away. Uh, but right now, I kind of prefer this as a strip management tool. This still isn't full layered animation, by the way. This is just kind of like mi remixing with existing motion capture that I grabbed from Mixamo. All right. Uh, I don't know how much time I've got left. Uh, but, yes, you do? One minute. Okay. One 
Good. So I'm going to show you, well, so I lied. You can stand up when we're over. <laughs> um, this is the thing that, uh, again, came up uh, yesterday. Let's see, do I have it loaded? No, OK. Let me open my other file real quick. Uh, I, the last talk here, though, so. I know, but people want to get to cool stuff or beer or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, actually, that'd be fine. All right, hold on. Don't save. I did have a clip ready that was like finished. Oh, no. That's why, because I did not name it correctly. Uh, layer versus, okay. Cool. And I have my workspace hidden away, because again, I have a lot of add ons. So, you know, just a few to, to work with this stuff. Uh, but somewhere in Brave Rabbit Shelf is a thing that basically just says, like, you know, action editor or reload scripts or whatever. So I, whatever you add to it, you can add to the quick favorite menu. All right, that's, that's less important. But what I want to show you is <clears throat> base layer, animation layer one, animation layer two. Um, again, I said you can name these whatever you want. So if you're working in animation layers, name them. And so if this is garbage, and this is garbage two, and this is garbage three, if you have a little snippet of Python that I randomly found at four in the morning the other night, uh, you can basically, oh no, did I not, I didn't make an ad, no, hold on. Just kidding. Animation layer rename. Ah, Brave Rabbit Shelf to the rescue. So that was a little bit of code, and look, my animation layers are renamed, and I have a new layer ready to push keys to. So when I go over here and insert keys in object mode, because that's what I wanted to do, when I insert keys and I push it down, it goes to the layer I want. Yay, animation layers. But I still want to export all this. So I jump from this animation layer scene to export. And my export scene has export control and whatever noise I wanted it, and now I can start naming these and organizing the export. And how do you do this, you say? Well, I had the idea in a random conversation at Blender Conference the other day, and I went home and I said, I probably should test this out. And so the way that this managed to work was, if I delete this export scene, um, if you've never looked for where the NLA tracks live, just like actions, everything lives under the object or the armature. So here you can see base layer, animation layer, whatever. And I go to create a new scene. And if I do new, I have nothing. And you can link stuff, of course. But if I copy settings, this is not quite what I want. Linked is great if you want to have one animation but you know a bunch of other stuff going on. So you can have kind of like scene separation. Or I'm going to do a full copy. And in the new scene, animation layer, whatever, this will be named export, if I delete these strips, I say, don't hold my seed anymore. And I call this uh, export or whatever it is. These don't matter. And now I select export. And or oh, you know what? I should call this default, because that's what it'll become. Thank you. And I can go up to add. And I can say, add action strip. Make sure, that the, make sure you selected the track. And now I can add the crouch, and not there, I, you know, rewind. And I can go to this one and call this, you know, whatever, run or whatever it was, doesn't matter, at number two animation, <laughs> and add the action and pick um, the idle. And so now, when I jump back to animation layers, and I come in and I do something like, you know what, this source idle action is now source idle dot final, because I'm really certain this is approved. <laughs> it's final, dude, no problem. And now I go to export, and when I look inside the strip, and I say, hey buddy, what are you holding? and it says stand idle final, I'm gonna export that to the game. Are you sure? You can rename it final two underscore 15. I slept, I fell asleep, I re-keyframed, I got a new job, I came back and this animation was still unapproved. Dot two, and 
source stand to crouch will still go to the game and export and you're good to go. So you can export this scene and spit it out. And as long as you don't update the rig, you know, you, you, the rig at least is approved because again, every time the rig is solid from the start. Uh, everything's set, everything's good, ready to go. So this is one way to manage export with the NLA separate from animation layers to work flow between the two or just choose to use one aspect of it. And there's another 12 hours of listening to me drone on about this on all kinds of platforms or ranting on you Twitter, but you know, my goal for this, and I want you all to help me, is just if someone's not using the NLA, show them it, like my friend Jason, who wasn't sure about animation layers, but now he's a convert. Amen. <laughs> slash thinking about it really hard. <laughs> or you're just managing export and you don't want to mess up the animation file every time and you learned a cool trick at the Nora Talk. So um, hopefully you can share these ideas, point people to it, let them understand it. And then the last request, if you're already a user and we break it, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> if we do something awesome, absolutely tweet it to all your friends. And if you want input and feedback, I am the, the roadmap master of time keeping of the NLA. The NLA roadmap unofficial keeper of bugs and priorities. So please message me with requests that, and code that fix cool stuff for both export and the NLA. And weird requests, say I use this to make transforming werewolves and cool characters because action constraints are hard, so I shove all this stuff in the thing and then I use geometry nodes. Um, I just have to throw that in there so that maybe someone searching for geometry nodes gets trapped on YouTube and into the NLA talk and then they're like, yes, well, animation layers. Uh, so yeah, that's the, that's the pitch. And Q&A after or go get a drink and come back. Um, you can find me on Twitter. The, my company is Rigging Dojo. Uh, I've taught rigging and animation for over 10 years through that and support companies. Uh, I'm linked from there, but that's where you can find me easily. And uh, all of the resources I've got, I've, if you are a converted other software user, um, I have some really nice free information that you can share with your friends that don't want to hear about it anymore. And then you, they can watch it and convert and come back and bother you about how cool Blender is. Um, Come to the Blender module chat, join a meeting, and uh, stand up and introduce yourself for a second. The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> Master of time himself. I'm Superman, join us. We have time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. <laughs>